Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. Thanks for joining me again in the dark this evening. I'm Nick Nocturne, and tonight we're diving into Season 2 of Marble Hornets. Before we begin, let's review what we've already learned. Alex is hiding more than just his issues with the Operator, and To The Ark knows it. To The Ark is very closely linked to the Marble Hornets crew, has known the Operator for a long time, and hates Alex. Jay has been affected by the Operator since his time on set, and Brian is in trouble and has been going on a lot longer than Jay's investigation. Keep all of this in mind because the coming entries will build on these facts. Season 2 starts off with preview teasers on Jay's Twitter feed. To the Ark breaks into the account and uploads three photos, only one of which has any new meaning to us. The tally marks stand for 23, which is the day Marble Hornets returns, November 23rd, 2010. On that day, we're treated to entry 27, in which we discover Jay is alive but not well. He wakes up in a hotel with no idea how he got there, what town or state he's in, and no memory of the last seven months. He has an extra camera, a duffel bag with some pills and a key inside, and there's a safe in the room he can't unlock. Jay explores the hotel and meets Jessica next door. She claims he looks familiar, but Jay says they haven't met. Later, Jay finds a video file on his laptop of a tunnel in what looks like a park. He searches the area, and after finding a park named Rosswood, he asks Jessica if she knows it. Jessica denies knowing anything about Rosswood Park, and in the midst of conversation, Jay forgets the initial lie he told about why he's staying in a hotel and contradicts himself. A week later, Jay is out of leads until Jessica comes to the door to confront him about his lies and odd behavior and admits she needs help. She's lost massive amounts of memory, has no idea how she got to the hotel, and is suffering insomnia. Jay immediately realizes they're in conjoined hotel rooms for a reason and tells her to start packing. They've got to leave now. Jay uploads his footage as an entry, announces they're leaving that night, and then uploads again an hour later. Jay packs and goes to meet Jessica, but she's gone. He finds a note on the bedside table with an operator symbol and a four-digit code, the combination to the safe in Jay's room, containing dozens of videotapes and a portable hard drive. He grabs them all before being attacked by the Mask Man, known as Maskey by fans and series writers, and escapes the hotel. Jay updates Twitter from the road as he finds a new place to stay. Most of the first tapes are driving footage, but he does find something substantial and uploads entry number 34. Jay arrives at the return address from the package she received at the end of last season and finds an abandoned house. Keep in mind that all footage Jay uploads now will come from the tapes he found in the safe, and make up the missing seven months between last season and now, starting just after his last entry in season one on the timeline. Jay tweets that To The Ark has started uploading again with a video called Fragments. Once again, To The Ark makes it clear they don't like Alex and know something is deeply wrong with him. The video description says, Hello again. On Twitter, Jay hesitates to upload the next entry. I was not expecting what I just found on these tapes. Can't decide if I should upload it or not. A day later, Jay uploads entry number 35. He goes back to the abandoned house and wanders around before Alex appears and warns him of something behind the quarter. Jay investigates and is attacked by Maskey. Alex and Jay wrestle him to the floor and pull off the mask, revealing Tim. Alex tells Jay to pass him his knife, but he refuses. Alex grabs a block of cement and breaks Tim's leg. The rest of the footage is Jay driving. Now, it's well known to most Marble Hornets fans that Tim is Maskey. The reveal comes so early that we're not even at the halfway point in the series. Lesser known among fans is just how deeply ingrained Tim and his alter ego was in Season 1. And once again, it's To The Ark's videos that let us know. Do you remember the black and white videos from To The Ark's messages, attention, warning, and the hacked entry that scared Jay out of his apartment? Until these videos began showing up, there weren't any uploads from To The Ark like these, especially the first two, which break the pattern of To The Ark's colored uploads, including rain and water imagery, and present their own pattern. Messages and Attention are old black and white footage from the 1940s. Both have the same font style used to speak to the viewer, and both have just a period in the description. If To The Ark's videos are like a game of matching pairs, Messages and Attention make the most obvious cohesive pair. But why make them so obviously correlated, and why break the pattern so hard? It's the answer to the biggest question many people had when finding out it was Tim's picture at the end of Messages. Because there wasn't any reason for To The Ark to concern themselves with Tim, right? We know better now. Look at the actual message in the video. Tell us you have been keeping secrets. Smile for the camera. Followed by Tim's face. What is this video in response to? Entry number 18, our first sighting of Maskey in Brian's abandoned house, who we now know was Tim. When To The Ark said, Tell us you have been keeping secrets in response to Maskey attacking Jay in entry 18, they were telling Tim to confess it was him under the mask. That's why his face fades in at the end of Smile for the Camera, because he'd been caught on Jay's camera, and To The Ark is addressing Tim, not Jay. To The Ark knew it was Tim all the way back to his very first appearance as Maskey, which is much more disturbing than Tim's secret life. It makes perfect sense for To The Ark being an original Marble Hornets cast member, but adds a whole new round of questions as to how they knew it was Tim and didn't seem surprised. This makes the companion video attention a lot more interesting. Jay's note is that he's scared it says us in the video, and while that may be a bluff about how many people are using To The Ark's channel, the return segment is true. Look at what the sailor is doing in this clip. 
picking something up, going to throw it away, and then reversing his decision. Tim must have come to his senses after the events of Entry Number 19 and split from To The Ark, who we know he's working with again from the following two videos, Warning and Entry. To The Ark wants him back into the fold, and we know he did come back. And besides To The Ark's hints that Tim was Maskey in Season 1, there is the major clue regarding Tim's jacket from Entry Number 20, which is the same one Maskey wears in Entry Number 23, and the hacked upload to Jay's channel by To The Ark. It's the same technique Troy and Joseph used to make sure we understood it was Jay in the return video last season, because he was wearing the same shirt in entry number 19 before vanishing with Maskey, who is, again, wearing Tim's jacket in this same entry. Back in the season 2 timeline, a few days pass after the Maskey reveal and Jay admits he's waiting to see if To The Ark responds. He's rewarded with a new video, broadcast. <laughs> There are four important points to this response. First, the video is live stereoscopic footage, just like the Season 1 video Signal, which brings up the second point. Broadcasts and signals are directly related in communication systems, making the Signal and Broadcast videos run to the arc linked in two major ways, the titles and the red and blue shading on live footage. Next, check out the footage itself, very wavy and looking upward, almost as if it was underwater, and the video description reads, Are you drowning? We can even spot a human figure on the side staring down, which must be the owner of the distorted voice heard in the video, our fourth major video component to examine. Before we reveal what's being said, take notice of Jay's tweet right after to the arc's response. I definitely hear words on this video. Can't make out anything coherent right now, though. Something to keep in mind as we continue is just how often Troy, Joseph, and Tim will go out of their way to make sure a plot point of the series is understood or a code is solved, especially in regards to video puzzles from to the arc. I'll allow Troy to explain further. I, I realize that I am both too good and really bad at making puzzles, uh, like, like number puzzles and stuff. Like I would either make them to where they could be solved in like a minute or never. Uh, like I even think the you didn't one, include a cipher. Yeah, I think like one one of them was so bad, like so hard to figure out. It was the one where I actually had to go on the Twitter and be like. I think it means this, and you know, kind of lead people to it. Um, I actually showed one. That's what I was going to say. You showed it to your friend who actually minored in cryptology? He didn't minor, he just took it. And yeah, and he was like, yeah, I don't know. He's like, this is literally impossible to solve. <laughs> I thought it was. Sorry. <laughs> This might have a lot to do with the program video, which had a code so strongly made it took four years to crack. You'll see another major instance of Troy using Jay's Twitter account to guide viewers later on, but it needs to be clear from this point that the Marvel Hornets team goes out of their way to make things a little more obvious to viewers not playing the puzzle aspect. We've just explored one of those moments by seeing Tim and Maskey were wearing exactly the same jacket in entry number 19 and entry 20, which were back-to-back -back videos on the main Marvel Hornets channel. As well as making sure those who watch the series without solving to the arc's code stay up to date, this approach also gives the audience more puzzle pieces to work with in solving the Marvel Hornets story. Now, as for the voice from broadcast, it turns out to the arc used a text-to-speech program to create the audio. The message is, enjoying watching you suffer. Do you know me? I will always know you. To recap, this video has stereoscopic shading, just like in Signal, and a title that directly ties to Signal to make it very clear they're linked. Two instances of water imagery, one in the footage from beneath the water looking up, and in the video description that asks, are you drowning? So to the arc is back to the Noah's Ark metaphor and their obsession with being caught in a flood. And a message in the audio that makes it clear to the arc enjoys watching someone from entry number 35 suffer. In that entry, we see Tim's leg being smashed with a rock and heard him scream, so it's fair enough to guess it may be him, especially now that we know they're pretty closely linked. Though we also know To The Ark hates Alex through two of their videos, Program and Fragments. Either way, To The Ark tells whoever this is directed at, I will always know you, tying them to the original Marble Hornets crew yet again. Finally, this furthers evidence that whoever To The Ark is, Maskey was only a temporary part of the club and not a main member. Not only did To The Ark use their channel to call Tim out on his Maskey act and then call him back when he walked off, they may actually be taunting him here, enjoying his suffering. Jay uploads the next entry after finding some corrupt footage at the end of a previous tape and subtitles what he can hear being said. Alex is angry at Jay for not giving him his knife, and Jay is angry with Alex for breaking Tim's leg. After some heavy distortion, we hear Alex tell Jay he knew... What hotel you were at, what room you were at, and then get a package delivered to your door. You're not exactly much fun. Jay asks Alex what to do now. The answer? Lay low. Jay states in the video he knows now that it was Alex who sent the package to his hotel room. What this means beyond who sent the package is completely lost on Jay. In the season 1 finale, Jay receives a text message from an encrypted number with the message 41810, April 18th, 2010. Whoever sent the package on April 18th must have sent the text about the date the package would arrive, and now that Jay knows Alex sent the package, it means Alex also sent the text. 
The text was sent to Jay on April 4th, 2010, at 6.47 p.m. When Jay gets Alex's package and watches the tape inside, the timestamp on the footage is also from April 4th, 2010, at 4.04 p.m. After Alex's girlfriend Amy speaks to him at this time, the operator appears and they both run away. If you haven't figured out just now what Jay missed completely, let's look at the timeline in a new light. Alex and Amy are attacked by the operator on April 4th at 4.04 p.m. At 6.47 p.m., just a little over two and a half hours later, Alex sends Jay the mystery text with a coded number in a cryptic fashion so that he has to solve the message. April 18th, 2010. On April 18th, Alex leaves the package for Jay, which, remember, was easy for him because Alex knew what hotel he was at, what room he was at, and then got a package delivered to his door. And when Jay watches the tape inside that package, it opens with a jumbled mess of distorted and creepy footage that only one person we know of would use for a video, and it ends exactly the same way. It's natural that Jay would assume the text message and the tape were from To The Ark, but now we know it was Alex who sent the package, which means he made the video that looked like it came from To The Ark. We know it was Alex who sent the text as well that, again, looked like it was sent by To The Ark. And that text message was sent to Jay just a little over two hours after Alex and Amy were attacked by the operator. Out of all the people to contact about this, Alex chose Jay, an uninvolved third party he hasn't seen or spoken to in over three years, who he had said goodbye to on bad terms, and who probably had changed phone numbers at least twice in that time. But somehow, Alex still managed to get Jay's new number and contacted him, because Alex knew Jay had discovered the operator and came face to face with it. Alex knew if he made the text message cryptic, Jay would think it came from To The Ark. He knew how to make the tape from his camera look like one of To The Ark's videos, but needed time to edit it, which is why he chose to make the date the package would arrive at least two weeks after sending the text. With the text message and the tape together, Alex knew Jay would immediately think it was all from To The Ark. And during this, Alex knew where Jay was staying, even though he'd been flying in and out of hotels, trying to escape a stalker after his apartment burned down. How did he know all this? Because Alex has been watching the Marble Hornets channel all along. Only someone who has seen Jay's entries and Twitter updates would know what he's discovered, what he's doing, and where he is in the investigation. They would know all about To The Ark, watch their videos, learn how Jay reacts to the responses, and could pose as To The Ark if they played it right. Alex, who has had zero contact with Jay up until now, found out about the Marble Hornets channel, learned that Jay discovered what was going on during Marble Hornets, watched as he came into contact with the operator, and did whatever he needed to in order to track Jay down, get his phone number, and prepare for an event in which he needed to meet in person. Alex knew to disguise himself as To The Ark and how to pull it off without revealing himself until he wanted to show up, and even had the foresight to watch out for Tim in his masky state when meeting Jay at the abandoned house, including bringing a pocket knife to the meeting. The best part of this reveal isn't even that Alex has been watching, it's that To The Ark knew, and they even told us far ahead of time. Remember the third video, Deluge? We found out in our Season 1 review that the audio was a slowed down track of someone saying Alex four times, followed by the phrase, watching you. To The Ark wanted us to know as soon as they did that Alex was watching Jay. The question we need to ask now is why is this such a major point? There's no denying Alex's behavior is extremely suspicious. To The Ark needed Jay to know as soon as they did that Alex was watching, then went out of their way to try giving him the truth about entry number 14 through the program code, as well as leading Jay to the Red Tower so he could find the tape in which Seth follows Alex to a basement and disappears. Now, we see that Alex needed to contact Jay when he was in trouble, but disguised himself and went to extraordinary lengths not to be discovered while arranging a meeting. Why would he do this if he needed Jay's help? Why would he choose to meet Jay in an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere? One thing is clear, Alex is not to be trusted, and is keeping way more secrets than Jay knows. To The Ark even confirms this in their next video, Sidetone. In case you didn't catch it, that was Alex's voicemail playing in the background, and the code at the end means lies. The next entry is preceded by a load of tweets from Jay struggling to sign into YouTube. I may have temporarily forgotten my password. I keep trying different ones, but nothing's working. I've tried all the passwords I've ever used. None are working. Why can't I remember? I can't use the forgotten password feature because it's linked to an old email address that I also don't remember the password of. I have the worst headache right now. 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 Keep thinking I'm hearing things. Heads pounding. Sleep now. The next entry is uploaded on March 23rd at 10.54 p.m. Hey, do 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alex. Happy birthday to you. Everyone still with me? Good, because this is where things turn truly disturbing on the Twitter side of the story. The previous tweets from Jay started around 10.42pm on March 21st and carried into 12.29am. So that's the night of March 21st into the early morning hours of March 22nd. The last tweet we get from Jay is at 12.29am on March 22nd, and on March 23rd at 10.54pm, entry 37 was uploaded. On March 29th, six full days later at 12.29pm, Jay tweets, Just woke up in my car near the Red Tower. Don't remember how I got here. This is a long way from where I was. At 1.47 p.m., the tapes aren't with me and the footage I copied to my laptop has apparently been deleted. I need to get back. Fast. Then the next day at 1.26 p.m., Jay tweets, On my way back. I looked in the red tower again before leaving but didn't find anything. Entry number 38 is uploaded on Wednesday, April 6th at 1.57 p.m. and it's just a video of Jay and Alex walking around the woods together with very little discussion. A minute after Jay tweets out the link, he says, I'm back. All the tapes and my camera are still here. So relieved. Think about this for a moment. Jay gets sick just after midnight on March 22nd, and entry number 37 goes up the next day. A full week later, Jay wakes up in his car near the Red Tower. He has no memory of how he got there, and it's a long way from his hotel. The tapes aren't with him, and the laptop footage is deleted. He instantly feels the urgency of the situation and says, I need to get back. Fast. Yet a full day later, Jay starts to head back after checking the tower, and another full week later, he announces he's back and uploads entry number 38, mentioning at the end that he didn't upload entry 37. Even after he'd woken up in a location miles from home with no memory of how he got there, found out his laptop was tampered with and videos had been deleted, and realized that his entire investigation had been compromised, it still took Jay a full day to leave the location and head back even after expressing how dire it was for him to return to the hotel. And then it took an entire week for him to make it back? This doesn't make any sense. It's as if Jay's living in extreme slow motion, going entire days without realizing it while typing up tweets he thinks are coming within minutes or a few hours of each other. This is important, and we'll be coming back to it real soon. Jay seems to shake off whatever just happened and uploads entry number 39. He calls Alex to try to get some answers after an extended silence, and Alex tells Jay to meet him at Roswood Park. After Jay goes to sleep, a mysterious figure in a hoodie creeps outside the car. On Twitter, Jay says, waiting to see if there's any response from To The Ark. A week later, he's still waiting. Looks like I'll be getting nothing from To The Ark again. I'm uneasy when it gets quiet like this. As usual, Jay gets what he wished for the following day. The footage is of a dog's lung being pumped by machines from Experiments in the Revival of Living Organisms, a film about bringing separate parts of a dead dog back to life. The code flashing over it spells, Am I a Prophet? We see footage of Jay sleeping and it's clear the camera is held by the man who crept outside his car in the last entry, which means it was To The Ark stalking him, and they've wanted to show this to Jay for a while. Remember, To The Ark can only post video responses in the present as Jay uploads tapes from the past, because whatever he finds is at least 7 months old. To the Ark has been sitting on this footage for seven months waiting to show it off, and introduced it with a video about bringing the dead back to life. The video is capped off with a message in the description. See you, saw you. A follow-up to the prior message, am I a prophet? To the Ark saw Jay, fulfilling the prophecy, but when did he prophesy that he'd be seeing him? All the way back in season one at the end of edition. <laughs> At least now we know To The Ark was definitely the one behind the camera, and it furthers proof that Maskey wasn't holding in at any point. In front of the camera, sure, but someone else seems to be directing the action and recording. For all we know, Maskey may still be crawling back from the abandoned house with a broken leg at this time. Jay immediately regrets needing a reply from To The Ark. Seeing that response has made me even more paranoid. 
as if I don't change locations enough already. In entry number 40, Jay is at Rosswood Park waiting for Alex and tries to call him. After getting no response, Jay goes for a walk in the woods and encounters the operator. He drops his camera and runs away. To the ARC uploads their video, Intermission. The video description reads, Behind the curtain, and yes, to the Ark was there, and he did see Jay. Take a look at this tree in entry number 40. That's the same hooded figure who had been recording Jay in his car, hanging out at Rosswood Park. Before uploading entry number 41, Jay notes, Weird. Problem with the video I've never had before. Should be uploaded in about an hour or so. The problem with the video comes in the form of 15 minutes of absolutely nothing on the tape before it continues after Jay ran from the operator. Someone picks up the camera and wanders through the woods, stopping only to focus on a stream and a waterfall. They go back to Jay's car, open the door, and put the camera on the seat. The hooded man, known as Hoodie, passes by the windshield, making himself very visible. He rescued the camera. And knowing this is the person behind to the arc, it makes sense that their only stop on the way to the parking lot would be a stream and a major shot of cascading water. On Twitter, Jay notes, I doubt it was Tim in number 41. It was only a week after Alex incapacitated him. No way he'd be walking by then. We know it wasn't Tim, but this is another example of Troy hammering in a point for the audience to be absolutely sure they understand. Hoodie is not Tim. To the Art keeps their response pattern going with Indicator. Remember what I told you in the last video about To The Ark's obsession with the number zero and the operator button? It's still going strong. All messages here are clear except for the end which means he lies. The video description is blind. Back on Twitter, someone asked Jay to make an entry updating his viewers on his well-being. He replies, I'm okay for the time being. I don't want to advertise my location too much. This only bears mentioning due to the story reason behind Jay's missing seven months of activity. In telling this viewer that he doesn't want to advertise his location too much, Jay is being a decent detective for the first time in, well, the whole series, basically. As we learned earlier in discovering Alex watches the Marble Hornets channel, it was never in Jay's best interest to publicly upload anything. To the arc, Maskey and Alex all used it against him to find out where he was, what he knew, what he was doing, and at what date and time he was doing it. It's only after someone burns down Jay's apartment that he seems to realize just how extremely dangerous it's become for him to keep advertising public knowledge about his whereabouts and activities. After someone still managed to find out where he was after weeks of hotel hopping and keeping a low profile, Jay must have been scared enough to swear off YouTube and Twitter for good, which is why he mentioned he might not be heard from again at the end of Season 1. It's not that going to find Alex was a suicide mission, it's just that he needed to go radio silent to avoid more danger. And from what we know, Jay discovered and experienced during the missing seven months, he would have become more convinced not to advertise anything he was recording or where he was at any given point. Returning to the timeline, Jay follows to the Ark's indicator video with entry number 42 containing video files from the hard drive he found in the hotel safe. The footage is from Alex's camera, which may mean it's his hard drive. Alex arrives at Rosswood Park for his meeting with Jay. As Alex gets out, we spot Hoodie underneath the tree again. He's still watching. Alex goes into the woods to look for Jay and we spot his smartphone, evidence that Alex can check YouTube at any time for new Marvel Hornets or to the Ark entries. Alex finally finds Jay sitting under a tree. He's terrified and explains what happened. Alex and Jay go to find his camera and talk about the package he sent. Alex wants Jay to help him find Amy, who disappeared after the operator attack, but Jay's done for the day after running into the operator himself. Back in the parking lot, he finds his camera on the seat, but Hoodie is no longer on scene. Alex and Jay decide to go check into a hotel nearby and work out their next move. On June 20th, 2011, Jay has a different kind of message on Twitter for his followers. Can't believe this whole thing started two years ago. I never should have taken those original tapes from Alex. Just hours later, To The Ark posts a new video titled Memories.
before we talk about this video, we need to talk about something that will be alluded to very strongly later on in the series, but has already been revealed well enough through To The Ark's videos and Jay's Twitter account, and it involves the most obscure piece of the series fans have wondered up and down about. Who was the person in the skull mask from the package tape Alex sent to Jay? I'll let the writers start this conversation topic. It, it was it was kind of in the end of season one. That's also kind of a side effect of the way we did season one of, oh, this would be cool, let's do this. Oh, this would be cool, let's do this. It was kind of put in there as a sort of wild card, I guess, which yeah. was like, if we can't think of, like if we want to add a new character or whatever, or we want to explain something better, we can always say it was this or something. Right. I think there was a, I, I can say this because it didn't actually happen, but uh, in season three, we were there was a short time where we were going to talk about uh, flashback Jay being right. having a, a mask type thing going on, and he was going to be Scully or something. That was like not be, a present day time travel. Yeah, thing. no, there wasn't any like time travel point. Point. Like in the flashback tapes or something, he was going to be that, but we didn't. That didn't happen. That didn't yeah. happen. So we. That's not canon. We thought that would be. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> we thought that would be make it too complicated. That's right. Jay had a possession state planned in the writing, just like Tim did with Maskey, which brings up another point that you'll see later, but, again, has already been shown well enough that it's not a real spoiler. When Tim is wearing his mask, he is not himself. It's an alternate mental state in which he isn't Tim at all, and when he snaps out of it, he has no memory of what he did or where he's been. Hmm. Extended periods of memory loss and waking up in places you shouldn't be with no clue how you got there. Doesn't that sound familiar? Especially recently, on Twitter, just before the video of Alex's birthday party was uploaded, Jay has had his fair share of a masky state, it just been without any kind of mask, and as Troy and Joseph explained, the idea to develop that plot point was ultimately scrapped, but the evidence of how badly Jay's mental state has deteriorated is very much there. Jay is still in the position of someone who's suffering the same Jekyll and Hyde disease as Tim, but a full stage of having a Scully personality like Tim has masky will never be seen in the story, even if the symptoms are flaring back and forth. So why bring this up now? The drawing you see here is to the arc's interpretation of Scully. Yes, To The Ark does know about Jay's issues, and how could they not? They've known about Tim's condition of becoming masky far longer than Jay, and when Jay got sick in the hallway of Brian's abandoned house, To The Ark labeled the video addition. Something has been added to something else, and Jay getting sick is the only subject in the video. To The Ark is expressing that Jay has been added to the club of mentally disturbed operator obsessors involved with the channel, and he's slowly sinking to their level of mental disruption. Knowing Troy and Joseph abandoned the Scully plotline though, why would To The Ark use that drawing to refer to Jay in this video response? It was after this point that the idea fell through in the writing, leaving its inclusion as kind of an open-ended thread. This is one of the only continuity issues that exists in the series, but we can rest knowing all the answers behind it and gain a lot of insight from what it meant at the time. And if you're wondering whether or not the Scully state was the reason behind Jay's recent disappearance and odd phenomena on Twitter, you'd be right. This whole Twitter piece was the perfect setup for the flashback footage Troy and Joseph had planned for Jay to discover his hidden alter ego in. Jay's mental state is disrupted, he disappears for a week, wakes up at the Red Tower with no memory and then takes another full week to get home without realizing how long he's taken to even leave the scene and get back to the hotel. This would have been the perfect story situation for To The Ark to catch the footage of Jay as Scully and then send it to him later as a major reveal. But again, Troy and Joseph scrapped the idea, leaving only its threads in the story. So, taking into account that To The Ark uploaded this video titled Memories on the same day Jay is reminiscing about how his investigation started, and referencing Jay's masky state, which, of course, had still been active in the writing at this point, it's very clear that To The Ark is speaking directly to Jay in this video and responding to his tweet. Yes, two years have passed by, and To The Ark is convinced that Jay has done nothing. They were years wasted, and so much more than time has been taken while Jay fumbled around. The timing of that last comment with the Scully drawing seems to indicate that To The Ark is accusing Jay of losing his time and his mind to the alternate personality growing inside him. The footage here is also from a key location in the first entry Jay uploaded. The bench is from Alex's front porch, where we had our first operator sighting. The post can't be placed. It's not from the gazebo, but it does look like it might have been from Alex's porch as well, based on its design. The video description is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time is running out. Jay notices the video response but doesn't react much at all. He uploads entry number 43 in which Alex drives Jay to his old apartment and explains what happened to him and Amy in the video he sent. Alex claims he doesn't remember anything after escaping through the window. He tries to call Amy's roommate Jessica but receives no answer and leaves a message asking if she's heard from Amy. Alex drives Jay home and then goes to the woods by himself where he willingly approaches the operator. <laughs>
to the ARC response with inquiry. Jay replies on Twitter by saying, Those videos are so inconsistent. It's like they're being made by different people. No way I can prove that, though. Jay is alerted to a hidden message in the video by one of his followers almost immediately after this. The message is in a spectrogram, a form of image created using sound that can only be seen by using programs. The message reads, Do I help or do I kill? The video description of inquiry is minus centroid, which means removal of center mass. This fits in with the general theme of the video's more forward messages of a core piece of someone's identity missing. The area of the brain the arrow is pointing to in the footage is responsible for personal identity. To the Ark is currently obsessed with trying to figure out just who the people they're stalking actually are, or they're challenging Jay, Alex, and Tim to question their own identities. It's most likely both, as not even To the Ark knows what to do with them anymore. Do they help Alex, Jay, and Tim, or do they kill whoever they suspect are enemies? Jay's next upload is more footage from Alex's hard drive and shows a side to him we're more familiar with. Alex records himself moving around his apartment. He calls Jessica, Amy's roommate, and lies about getting in touch with Amy so she can forget about him asking earlier. Alex stares at himself in the mirror and coughs up blood in the sink. He tests out a flashlight and draws some operator pages, one with a tree and three crossed circles, and one with a giant crossed oval and the name Operator. While laying on the floor, the operator's shadow rolls over him and Alex is next seen sitting straight up from a different camera, staring at his bedroom door. He's still got a surveillance set up at home. He goes to bed and lays there for a bit. The operator shows up and Alex disappears from bed and doesn't return for the whole duration of the camera's battery. Jay mentions having no evidence he got in touch with Amy and had lied to Jessica. Someone asks Jay after this entry of To The Ark responded and Jay says he hasn't seen anything and doesn't know what to think of it. After all, this is a break in the call and response pattern. Jay continues his work and uploads entry number 45. Alex is working with his camera when something outside catches his attention. He goes to look then sprints back to grab the camera. Hoodie is outside Alex's house and he leads Alex on a chase into the woods where Maskey jumps him by surprise, attempts to smash his head with a rock, fails, and tries to choke him out. They spot something off camera and run away. Alex yells after them and audio distortion accompanies his voice. Get back here! What?! The next time I see you, I'll, I'll kill you! you. Over a week passes with still no response from To The Ark. Jay uploads entry number 46 in which he breaks into Alex's house and finds a videotape. Jay hides in Alex's utility closet when he comes back. Jay sees the operator outside the front window while trying to sneak out and Alex catches him. Jay tells Alex they have to leave immediately, but Alex keeps arguing until the operator reappears right behind him inside his bedroom. Jay runs out of the house and grabs the spare key by the front door. Alex stays behind. To The Ark chooses to break their silence over a week later with Classified. If that footage of Hoodie looks familiar to you, I've got some bad news. It's not the same clip from entry number 45, and even if it is from the same place, it's coming from an entirely different camera and a different moment in time during that night. Whoever shot this footage, it wasn't Hoodie, and it wasn't Masky, and whoever uploaded it is speaking directly to them as well. The full message decoded spells out, The Twins. Do you know what he did? I saw it. The uploader is referring to Maskey and Hoodie as the twins. They shot the footage from a different camera, and this video response takes place immediately after one that caused Jay to openly speculate on Twitter that To The Ark must be more than one person. Remember how I warned you earlier that Troy and Joseph really like to hammer in their points for viewers? This uploader is neither Maskey nor Hoodie. It's someone else entirely. They've also titled the video Classified. This is from a To The Ark member to the other To The Ark members. On top of coming after Jay saying To The Ark must be more than one person and being a video shot from someone other than Maskey and Hoodie, there was a major hint in an earlier entry most wouldn't catch. 
In entry number 44, when Alex sits down to draw his pages, the first has a tree with three distinct operator symbols. On the very next page, he draws a single giant operator symbol and underneath writes, Operator. This is a clever visual explanation for what's going on with To The Ark and The Operator. There are three operator symbols out in the woods on the same page together, and after them is a much larger symbol marked Operator. The three operator symbols are the three members of To The Ark. In entry number 47, we seem to continue right after last entry ended. Alex yells at Jay for breaking into his house and says he's done cooperating with him. He can't be trusted and isn't helping to find Amy. Jay gets Jessica's number from Alex by grabbing Alex's keys from his pocket and locking them in Jay's car until Alex complies. The next day, Jay calls Jessica and learns that Alex told her he had found Amy. Now they both know he lied. Entry number 48 is preceded by Jay noting he's got a lot of footage of stalking Alex on trips to the park, but nothing happens. In this entry, Jay follows Alex all the way into the woods to the entrance of a tunnel, the same tunnel from the secret file Jay found on his hard drive at the hotel. Alex turns his head and Jay runs off, thinking he's been spotted. He passes a stranger in a white shirt at the parking lot before leaving. On the very same day, six hours after Jay's upload to the Ark responds. <laughs> Video description reads, Remain seated, I will find you. Jay notes, To the Ark responds, It's never been this fast before as far as I remember. If you're wondering what remain seated, I will find you means, there's a pretty good chance this is another internal To the Ark members only message. Hoodie is speaking to the home user from Classified. Jay's next tweet comes with more hesitation. Finish looking through Alex's footage in the park. I don't want to share what I've seen. Been thinking about it and it might be best if I upload what happened in the park, just in case anything happens to me one day. Jay uploads entry number 49, containing footage from Alex's camera during his trip to the woods in the last entry while Jay was tailing him. Just after Alex turns around at the tunnel, a man appears and asks Alex if he's alright. Alex responds by screaming that he didn't want to be followed and murders the man, crushing his head with a rock. Alex leaves the body and the operator appears, vanishing with the dead man. Alex grabs his camera and leaves. On the way home, he calls Jay and tells him to go to Crosswood Park the next day. He's found something important. Jay tweets that he can't find any missing person reports filed around the time of entry number 49, no matter how much he searches. Later, To The Ark responds with extraction. The video description is, never. Did you notice how glaring red this response was? The last time, and only time, we've seen this much red was in Classified, a video that pulled out all the stops and letting us know it was uploaded by someone other than Masky or Hoodie. The uploader asked, do you know what he did? I saw it. This is in response to the video of Hoodie and Masky attacking Alex, which came shortly before we found out Alex murdered a man in the tunnel. Part of the extraction video shows an image of the tunnel from Alex's perspective with an eye looking in from the opposite end. It jump cuts the mask and after some close-ups with serious red overlay, we see a black and white washout of Alex murdering the man. It has the same washout as the image of the eye in the tunnel, pointed the same direction the eye was looking in. There's also a single frame in this scene with an operator style zero overlaid on the image. To the arc, the operator obsessed stalker watching behind the scenes saw what Alex did. They were the eye at the end of the tunnel, and they want to know if Hoodie and Maskey saw what Alex did here. Right after Alex kills a man, we have much stronger close-ups of Maskey and red light in the question, how much do you hate? Did you also spot footage of Tim from entry number 20 as Maskey was limping up the road? Going back to entry number 20, there was a note Jay added on Twitter that didn't seem very important at the time. It's very difficult to tell who's operating the camera in number 20. Alex would probably make do with whoever he had, so it could be anyone. To the Ark is trying to communicate that they were that cameraman. And what's more, the glaring red color is a tie-in to Classified, which means this is the same uploader. Jay continues going through his tapes and uploads entry number 50. It's the remaining footage of he and Alex walking through the woods. Alex asks Jay if he successfully stole anything when he broke into his apartment because his spare front door key is missing. Jay denies taking it. Alex asks if he's gotten in touch with Jessica. Jay also denies speaking to Jessica. Alex tells a story about punishments the original settlers of the area used to enact on criminals in the woods. And no, this is not an origin story for the operator. Troy and Joseph have admitted that of all the things they'd written, their only real regret was putting this red herring into the dialogue, because too many fans took it as a legitimate origin story behind the operator's existence. 
The tape ends with Jay complaining about it getting dark. Alex says he can go because he realizes they need Jessica for whatever he meant to show Jay and he has to bring her next time. Jay agrees and leaves, but Alex stays behind in the woods after dark. On the way back, Jay encounters Maskey and chases him to the tunnel but finds no evidence of Alex murdering anyone. The end of the entry contains footage of Jay taking advantage of the stolen apartment key and breaking into Alex's place one more time. He manages to find a tape in a secret compartment, steals it, and labels it for the camera. This event adds more evidence for the reason Jay didn't upload anything during the missing seven months. He'd gotten smart enough to understand that any action he took made public could jeopardize everything. He couldn't take the risk of Alex discovering he'd just broken in again and stolen something on YouTube. Jay finds the 5642 tape and uploads entry number 51. It's a tape from the Marble Hornet set with Alex running Brian through some scenes. He leads Brian to an abandoned hospital nearby where he has a severe coughing fit and feels uncomfortable being there. The operator attacks, and when the action picks up again, Brian is holding the camera and looking around for Alex. He hears coughing nearby and follows it to a room where he spots Tim on the ground covered in a blanket. The operator strikes, knocking Brian unconscious. Alex drags Brian's body into the room, retrieves the camera, and leaves. On Twitter, Jay says, Making a trip to somewhere I never thought I'd go back to. Twelve hours later, he adds, Still driving. I'm going to try and have entry number 52 uploaded tomorrow night. Jay manages to get entry number 52 online, the final tape from the hotel safe. Jay brings Jessica to Rosswood Park to meet Alex, who leads them to a shed deep in the woods. He convinces Jay to go upstairs and towards a corner before pulling a gun on him. I'm going with Brian on it, and I know you've been following me too. What? I've had plenty of chances to do this. So you're going to kill I didn't want to get Jessica involved. That's why just, I told her that's about Amy. Amy. That's your fault! Alex, please! When I Don't gave you the safe, I told you never to mention him again! Matthew attacks Alex from around the corner, and Jay and Jessica escape. They stop to talk in the parking lot and agree to meet up at a hotel nearby after Jessica stops at her place to pack some things. Jay gets into Alex's car and steals his camera and portable hard drive. Next, we see Jay and Jessica at the hotel. Jay shows her the tapes he has concerning everything he knows about Alex and Amy's disappearance and tells her he'll put it in the safe in his room. He asks her for a code to use and she supplies the last four digits of her phone number, 1102. Jay puts all his tapes in the portable hard drive in the safe and sets up his surveillance camera. After going to bed, Jay hears Jessica scream next door and goes to her room, finding the operator instead. Jay tackles the operator and ends up on the floor unconscious. When Jay wakes up the next day, entry number 27 picks up, beginning the present timeline of season 2. Jay notes that over the months he's been uploading the safe tapes, he's seen just how dangerous Alex is. Looking back on it, he never intended to help me. He probably just wanted the opportunity to tie up another loose end like he did with the others. Jay is determined to find Alex now. He won't let him keep getting away with this. Jay heads back to the original shooting location of Marble Hornets in search of Alex or any clues leading to his new location. On his first day there, Jay spots Tim coming out of an antique shop looking normal. Jay loses sight of him but is going to stake out the area until he makes contact and vows to see this through to the end. This wraps up Season 2. Finally, Jay is putting together the pieces of everything he's witnessed and what he said about Alex making contact just to try and put him down like the others is precisely the point of this whole story arc. That's why Troy made it one of Jay's notes in the season finale entry. Alex used the package tape to lead Jay to an abandoned building. Maybe he was worried about Maskey or Hoodie or anyone else he's made an enemy of, but if Alex really wanted Jay's help, he never would have gone to the lengths of disguising himself as to the arc to lead Jay to an abandoned place out in the woods. He also wouldn't have ignored Jay's phone calls multiple times, which to the arc warned Jay he was going to do when they said lies in response to Alex's voicemail claiming, leave me a message and I'll call you back. In fact, Alex only expresses that he wants Jay's help finding Amy after Jay forcefully reintroduces himself into Alex's life by breaking into his apartment. If Alex had been in any way legitimate, he would have said this well before now and made actual attempts to speak with Jay. He seems to only act in character as someone who does need Jay's help after going to Rosswood Park to meet him and discovering Jay just ran miles out of the woods to escape the operator. Notice how this knowledge changes Alex's behavior? Suddenly, he's cooperating with Jay, even taking him to his apartment to go through what happened the day of the package tape. He even calls Jessica and leaves the voicemail asking if she's heard from Amy. Yet after this, such a length of time goes between Jay and Alex speaking that Jay breaks into his apartment just to get answers. Alex learned at Rosswood Park that Jay had just seen the operator, which meant that he didn't need to do anything to Jay. After all, we have two tapes now displaying that Alex leads people into traps to meet the operator and, if they become a problem, he attempts to kill them. When Alex met Jay at the abandoned house, he intended to kill him, but Maskey attacked and from there, Alex must have been too surprised to carry out his plan. Then, when he meets Jay at Rosswood, he finds the operator had appeared to him, so again, something kept him from killing or attacking Jay to leave for his monster. He'd seen the operator, so there wasn't a need for Alex to do anything to him. It's only after Jay makes it clear to Alex that he's not going to leave him alone and continue digging for the truth that Alex seems dead set on finishing him off, despite Jay having seen his master. And it's pretty clear that's the relationship Alex has to the operator. It's his puppeteer, his director. The operator is operating Alex, but doesn't seem to have complete control to the point of keeping Alex from lashing out and trying to kill someone else the operator may be using. 
Jay has gotten too close and too obsessed with exposing Alex, and even brought Jessica into it, and now Alex has no choice but to kill both of them to protect his secrets. And hey, wait, Alex, pointing a gun, trying to kill a Marble Hornets crew member? If you didn't listen to the spoiler from our season 1 review, now's the time to leave your ears uncovered because this is the tie-in the writing calls for. The empty bullet casing in Brian's house came from Alex's gun. To the Arc's Advocate video was a countdown explaining that Alex was about to attack Brian. Right after the binary clock finishes its countdown, the stigma symbol appears, which was To the Arc's personal symbol for Alex before the stigmata plotline was abandoned at the start of season 2. Right after the stigmata sign shows up, the camera swings to the right, making Brian disappear from view, and then the video ends. This is exactly what happened off camera, and it's what To the Arc was trying to tell Jay. Alex was coming after Brian, and after he arrived, Brian would be gone. To the Arc even made sure Jay knew Alex had something to do with it by making fake operator sickness pages and leaving them in Brian's house as a huge clue. And yes, they were To the Arc's pages. The clue on the back saying at the tower was written in the same style of handwriting seen on the front, and the red tower was a major setup from To the Arc for Jay to learn what Alex had done to Seth. One by one, Alex has been attempting to either lure Marble Hornet's crew members to the operator or kill them to keep his secrets in the dark. Alex was the reason Brian's house was a mess. He had tried to kill him, leaving a bullet casing behind in the process, and may or may not have succeeded judging by all that blood in the bathroom sink. But why would Alex wait until now to do this, years after Marble Hornets ended? If he's so into guarding his secrets, why would Brian suddenly become a threat he had to shoot now versus years ago? Because Alex has been watching the Marble Hornets channel trying to figure out Jay's next move every step of the way, and the interview with Tim scared him into action. The Advocate video warning Jay about Alex's attack on Brian came directly after entry number 15. The interview Jay conducted with Tim, in which he asked about Alex, asked about Brian, and tried to actively dig for information. Because Alex was watching so fervently, he knew that Jay would try interviewing Brian next and couldn't take that chance, so Alex hunted Brian down first and shut him up. To the Ark knew what he was doing because they were watching Alex. That's why the message in Delu so early in the series was a warning. Alex, watching you. So at the end of Season 2, what are we left with that we didn't explicitly know before? Let's take a look at our new notes. A member of To The Ark wearing a hoodie is stalking Jay and Alex and using Maskey to help them. This person seems to be an active uploader for the account and on the same page as the original To The Ark. They know Jay, Alex, and Tim, and seem to be keeping their water and revenge obsessions. The original uploader for To The Ark is not Hoodie or Maskey. This now makes three separate users, the original, Hoodie, and then Maskey. Remember, when To The Ark sent messages to Maskey on their channel in black and white videos, they told him to return to us after first catching Maskey acting alone. This means that Hoodie was there before Maskey was fully taken in. We have not seen To The Ark's founding member on film, at least not in any obvious telling way. Alex had led Marble Hornets crew members to the operator on purpose during the filming in 2006, and now he's attempting to kill them to destroy evidence of what he did. Alex only knows he needs to keep his victim silent because he's been watching Jay's investigation online since the very beginning. He knows all about what Jay's found, his own encounters with the operator, and to the arc's responses and attitude towards him. Are you ready for Season 3? This is where everything finally begins to come together and the remaining answers can be laid down. It's the most terrifying, exciting story arc of the series as well as the most involved. We'll be back soon to take it on, but in the meantime, my advice from the last video still stands. If you haven't watched Season 3 yet, open up entry number 53 and start from there. Go! Just do it! The Marble Hornets team deserves your views, your likes, and your subscriptions, and my explanations are no substitute for the real deal. If you enjoyed this video and I helped clear up some questions, feel free to like this video, leave a comment if you please, and subscribe to catch our Season 3 review the moment it's uploaded. Your support is extremely appreciated. Thanks for joining me in the dark this evening, friends. The moon is falling and the sun is coming up, and you know what that means. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and just like Hoodie, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight. Hotel you were at, what room you were at, and then get a package delivered to your door. You're not exactly going to Jay asks Alex what to do now. The answer? Lay low. Jay states in the video he knows now that it was Alex who sent the package to his hotel room. What this means beyond who sent the package is completely lost on Jay. In the season 1 finale, Jay receives a text message from an encrypted number with the message 41810, April 18th, 2010. Whoever sent the package on April 18th must have sent the text about the date the package would arrive. And now that Jay knows Alex sent the package, it means Alex also sent the text. The text was sent to Jay on April 4th, 2010 at 6.47 p.m. When Jay gets Alex's package and watches the tape inside, the timestamp on the footage is also from April 4th, 2010 at 4.04 p.m. After Alex's girlfriend Amy speaks to him at this time, the operator appears and they both run away. 
If you haven't figured out just now what Jay missed completely, let's look at the timeline in a new light. Alex and Amy are attacked by the operator on April 4th at 4.04 p.m. At 6.47 p.m., just a little over two and a half hours later, Alex sends Jay the mystery text with a coded number in a cryptic fashion so that he has to solve the message. April 18th, 2010. On April 18th, Alex leaves the package for Jay, which, remember, was easy for him because Alex knew what hotel he was at, what room he was at, and then got a package delivered to his door. And when Jay watches the tape inside that package, it opens with a jumbled mess of distorted and creepy footage that only one person we know of would use for a video, and it ends exactly the same way. It's natural that Jay would assume the text message and the tape were from To The Ark, but now we know it was Alex who sent the package, which means he made the video that looked like it came from To The Ark. We know it was Alex who sent the text as well that, again, looked like it was sent by To The Ark. And that text message was sent to Jay just a little over two hours after Alex and Amy were attacked by the operator. Out of all the people to contact about this, Alex chose Jay, an uninvolved third party he hasn't seen or spoken to in over three years, who he had said goodbye to on bad terms, and who probably had changed phone numbers at least twice in that time. But somehow, Alex still managed to get Jay's new number and contacted him, because Alex knew Jay had discovered the operator and came face to face with it. Alex knew if he made the text message cryptic, Jay would think it came from To The Ark. He knew how to make the tape from his camera look like one of To The Ark's videos, but needed time to edit it, which is why he chose to make the date the package would arrive at least two weeks after sending the text. With the text message and the tape together, Alex knew Jay would immediately think it was all from To The Ark. And during this, Alex knew where Jay was staying, even though he'd been flying in and out of hotels, trying to escape a stalker after his apartment burned down. How did he know all this? Because Alex has been watching the Marble Hornets channel all along. Only someone who has seen Jay's entries and Twitter updates would know what he's discovered, what he's doing, and where he is in the investigation. They would know all about To The Ark, watch their videos, learn how Jay reacts to the responses, and could pose as To The Ark if they played it right. Alex, who has had zero contact with Jay up until now, found out about the Marble Hornets channel, learned that Jay discovered what was going on during Marble Hornets, watched as he came into contact with the operator, and did whatever he needed to in order to track Jay down, get his phone number, and prepare for an event in which he needed to meet in person. Alex knew to disguise himself as to the Ark and how to pull it off without revealing himself until he wanted to show up, and even had the foresight to watch out for Tim in his masky state when meeting Jay at the abandoned house, including bringing a pocket knife to the meeting. The best part of this reveal isn't even that Alex has been watching, it's that To The Ark knew, and they even told us far ahead of time. Remember the third video, Deluge? We found out in our Season 1 review that the audio was a slowed down track of someone saying Alex four times, followed by the phrase, watching you. To The Ark wanted us to know as soon as they did that Alex was watching Jay. The question we need to ask now is why is this such a major point? There's no denying Alex's behavior is extremely suspicious. To the Ark needed Jay to know as soon as they did that Alex was watching, then went out of their way to try giving him the truth about entry number 14 through the program code, as well as leading Jay to the Red Tower so he could find the tape in which Seth follows Alex to a basement and disappears. Now, we see that Alex needed to contact Jay when he was in trouble, but disguised himself and went to extraordinary lengths not to be discovered while arranging a meeting. Why would he do this if he needed Jay's help? Why would he choose to meet Jay in an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere? One thing is clear. Alex is not to be trusted, and is keeping way more secrets than Jay knows. To The Ark even confirms this in their next video, Sidetone. In case you didn't catch it, that was Alex's voicemail playing in the background, and the code at the end means lies. The next entry is preceded by a load of tweets from Jay struggling to sign into YouTube. I may have temporarily forgotten my password. I keep trying different ones, but nothing's working. I've tried all the passwords I've ever used. None are working. Why can't I remember? I can't use the forgotten password feature because it's linked to an old email address that I also don't remember the password of. I have the worst headache right now. now. Keep thinking I'm hearing things. Heads pounding. Sleep now. The next entry is uploaded on March 23rd at 10.54 p.m. Hey, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alex. Happy birthday to you. Everyone still with me? Good, because this is where things turn truly disturbing on the Twitter side of the story. The previous tweets from Jay started around 10.42pm on March 21st and carried into 12.29am. So that's the night of March 21st into the early morning hours of March 22nd. The last tweet we get from Jay is at 12.29am on March 22nd, and it's just like the Season 1 video Signal, which brings up the second point. Broadcasts and signals are directly related in communication systems, making the signal and broadcast videos run to the arc linked in two major ways, the titles and the red and blue shading on live footage. Next, check out the footage itself. Very wavy and looking upward, almost as if it was underwater, and the video description reads, Are you drowning? We can even spot a human figure on the side staring down, which must be the owner of the distorted voice heard in the video, our fourth major video component to examine. Before we reveal what's being said, take notice of Jay's tweet right after to the arc's response. I definitely hear words on this video. Can't make out anything coherent right now, though. Something to keep in mind as we continue is just how often Troy, Joseph, and Tim will go out of their way to make sure a plot point of the series is understood or a code is solved, especially in regards to video puzzles from To The Ark. I'll allow Troy to explain further. I, I realize that I am both too good and really bad at making puzzles, uh, like, like number puzzles and stuff. Like, I would either make them to where they could be solved in, like, a minute, or never. Uh, like I even think the you didn't one, include a cipher. Yeah, I think like one one of them was so bad, like so hard to figure out. It was the one where I actually had to go on the Twitter and be like, I think it means this, and you know, I kind of lead people to it. Um, I actually I, showed one. That's what I was gonna say. You showed it to your friend who actually minored in cryptology. He didn't minor. He just took it. And yeah, and he was like, Yeah, I don't know. He's like, This is literally impossible to solve. <laughs> I thought. Sorry. <laughs> this might have a lot to do with the program video, which had a code so strongly made it took four years to crack. You'll see another major instance of Troy using Jay's Twitter account to guide viewers later on, but it needs to be clear from this point that the Marble Hornets team goes out of their way to make things a little more obvious to viewers not playing the puzzle aspect. We've just explored one of those moments by seeing Tim and Maskey were wearing exactly the same jacket in entry number 19 and entry 20, which were back-to-back -back videos on the main Marble Hornets channel. As well as making sure those who watch the series without solving to the arc's code stay up to date, this approach also gives the audience more puzzle pieces to work with in solving the Marble Hornet story. Now, as for the voice from broadcast, it turns out to the arc used a text-to-speech program to create the audio. The message is, enjoying watching you suffer. Do you know me? I will always know you. To recap, this video has stereoscopic shading just like in Signal, and a title that directly ties to Signal to make it very clear they're linked. Two instances of water imagery, one in the footage from beneath the water looking up, and in the video description that asks, are you drowning? So to the arc is back to the Noah's Ark metaphor and their obsession with being caught in a flood. And a message in the audio that makes it clear to the arc enjoys watching someone from entry number 35 suffer. In that entry, we see Tim's leg being smashed with a rock and heard him scream, so it's fair enough to guess it may be him, especially now that we know they're pretty closely linked. Though we also know to the arc hates Alex through two of their videos, program and fragments. Either way, to the arc tells whoever this is directed at, I will always know you, tying them to the original Marble Hornets crew yet again. Finally, this furthers evidence that whoever to the arc is, Maskey was only a temporary part of the club and not a main member. Not only did To The Ark use their channel to call Tim out on his masky act and then call him back when he walked off, they may actually be taunting him here, enjoying his suffering. Jay uploads the next entry after finding some corrupt footage at the end of a previous tape and subtitles what he can hear being said. Alex is angry at Jay for not giving him his knife, and Jay is angry with Alex for breaking Tim's leg. After some heavy distortion, we hear Alex tell Jay he knew... Once again, To The Ark makes it clear they don't like Alex and know something is deeply wrong with him. The video description says, Hello again. On Twitter, Jay hesitates to upload the next entry. I was not expecting what I just found on these tapes. Can't decide if I should upload it or not. A day later, Jay uploads entry number 35. He goes back to the abandoned house and wanders around before Alex appears and warns him of something behind the quarter. Jay investigates and is attacked by Maskey. Alex and Jay wrestle him to the floor and pull off the mask, revealing Tim. Alex tells Jay to pass him his knife, but he refuses. Alex grabs a block of cement and breaks Tim's leg. The rest of the footage is Jay driving.
Now, it's well known to most Marble Hornets fans that Tim is masky. The reveal comes so early that we're not even at the halfway point in the series. Lesser known among fans is just how deeply ingrained Tim and his alter ego was in Season 1. And once again, it's To The Ark's videos that let us know. Do you remember the black and white videos from To The Ark's messages, attention, warning, and the hacked entry that scared Jay out of his apartment? Until these videos began showing up, there weren't any uploads from To The Ark like these, especially the first two, which break the pattern of To The Ark's colored uploads including rain and water imagery and present their own pattern. Messages and Attention are old black and white footage from the 1940s. Both have the same font style used to speak to the viewer, and both have just a period in the description. If To The Ark's videos are like a game of matching pairs, Messages and Attention make the most obvious cohesive pair. But why make them so obviously correlated, and why break the pattern so hard? It's the answer to the biggest question many people had when finding out it was Tim's picture at the end of Messages. Because there wasn't any reason for To The Ark to concern themselves with Tim, right? We know better now. Look at the actual message in the video. Tell us you have been keeping secrets. Smile for the camera. Followed by Tim's face. What is this video in response to? Entry number 18, our first sighting of Maskey in Brian's abandoned house, who we now know was Tim. When To The Ark said, Tell us you have been keeping secrets in response to Maskey attacking Jay in entry 18, they were telling Tim to confess it was him under the mask. That's why his face fades in at the end of Smile for the camera, because he'd been caught on Jay's camera, and To The Ark is addressing Tim, not Jay. To The Ark knew it was Tim all the way back to his very first appearance as Maskey, which is much more disturbing than Tim's secret life. It makes perfect sense for To The Ark being an original Marble Hornets cast member, but adds a whole new round of questions as to how they knew it was Tim and didn't seem surprised. This makes the companion video attention a lot more interesting. Jay's note is that he's scared it says us in the video, and while that may be a bluff about how many people are using To The Ark's channel, the return segment is true. Look at what the sailor is doing in this clip. Picking something up, going to throw it away, and then reversing his decision. Tim must have come to his senses after the events of Entry number 19 and split from To The Ark, who we know he's working with again from the following two videos, Warning and Entry. To The Ark wants him back into the fold, and we know he did come back. And besides To The Ark's hints that Tim was Maskey in Season 1, there is the major clue regarding Tim's jacket from Entry number 20, which is the same one Maskey wears in Entry number 23, and the hacked upload to Jay's channel by To The Ark. It's the same technique Troy and Joseph used to make sure we understood it was Jay in the return video last season, because he was wearing the same shirt in entry number 19 before vanishing with Maskey, who is, again, wearing Tim's jacket in this same entry. Back in the season 2 timeline, a few days pass after the Maskey reveal, and Jay admits he's waiting to see if To The Ark responds. He's rewarded with a new video, broadcast. <laughs> There are four important points to this response. First, the video is live stereoscopic footage Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. Thanks for joining me again in the dark this evening. I'm Nick Nocturne, and tonight we're diving into Season 2 of Marble Hornets. Before we begin, let's review what we've already learned. Alex is hiding more than just his issues with the Operator, and To The Ark knows it. To The Ark is very closely linked to the Marble Hornets crew, has known the Operator for a long time, and hates Alex. Jay has been affected by the Operator since his time on set, and Brian is in trouble and has been going on a lot longer than Jay's investigation. Keep all of this in mind because the coming entries will build on these facts. Season 2 starts off with preview teasers on Jay's Twitter feed. To The Ark breaks into the account and uploads three photos, only one of which has any new meaning to us. The tally marks stand for 23, which is the day Marble Hornets returns, November 23rd, 2010. On that day, we're treated to entry 27, in which we discover Jay is alive but not well. He wakes up in a hotel with no idea how he got there, what town or state he's in, and no memory of the last seven months. He has an extra camera, a duffel bag with some pills and a key inside, and there's a safe in the room he can't unlock. Jay explores the hotel and meets Jessica next door. She claims he looks familiar, but Jay says they haven't met. Later, Jay finds a video file on his laptop of a tunnel in what looks like a park. He searches the area, and after finding a park named Rosswood, he asks Jessica if she knows it. 
Jessica denies knowing anything about Rosswood Park, and in the midst of conversation, Jay forgets the initial lie he told about why he's staying in a hotel and contradicts himself. A week later, Jay is out of Leeds until Jessica comes to the door to confront him about his lies and odd behavior and admits she needs help. She's lost massive amounts of memory, has no idea how she got to the hotel, and is suffering insomnia. Jay immediately realizes they're in conjoined hotel rooms for a reason and tells her to start packing. They've got to leave now. Jay uploads his footage as an entry, announces they're leaving that night, and then uploads again an hour later. Jay packs and goes to meet Jessica, but she's gone. He finds a note on the bedside table with an operator symbol and a four-digit code, the combination to the safe in Jay's room, containing dozens of videotapes and a portable hard drive. He grabs them all before being attacked by the masked man, known as Masky by fans and series writers, and escapes the hotel. Jay updates Twitter from the road as he finds a new place to stay. Most of the first tapes are driving footage, but he does find something substantial and uploads entry number 34. Jay arrives at the return address from the package she received at the end of last season and finds an abandoned house. Keep in mind that all footage Jay uploads now will come from the tapes he found in the safe, and make up the missing seven months between last season and now, starting just after his last entry in season one on the timeline. Jay tweets that To The Ark has started uploading again with a video called Fragments.